Hi, David here, CEO and founder of the Freedom Founders Mastermind. I didn't own a home. I didn't own my own home until I was age 37. You're thinking, what, were you homeless? What was the problem, David? I think you're, you're this guy that's all about real estate. Shouldn't you have owned a home uh, before age 37? Well, let me make this clear. I owned investment property way before age 37. In fact, I owned investment property by age 22. Uh, started by my first rental properties in, in 19, excuse me, uh, 1980, 1980, and built up a portfolio of properties before I actually took title home ownership of my own home. Now, let me explain. A lot of people think you should try to own, own a home. It's always been the American dream, right? At some point, you want to have a home ownership. Now, the generations are changing that a little bit. Uh, there's been some changes in the thinking patterns of the younger generations today. I think millennials and Gen Z are not quite so trapped by the idea of home ownership. Uh, it's a, we have a more mobile country, a more mobile social deno denomination today. And so overall, there's a less percentage of people that feel like there's there's an, an adamant reason to own a home. But nevertheless, home ownership, I think, will still for some time be the desire of most people. Now, we've had a time recently where homeownership has become difficult, uh, if not almost impossible for your younger generations. Uh, we have had the COVID stimulus money that has increased valuations of all real estate, all assets into massive bubbles in the last several years. And alongside that, we've had the rapid rise in interest rates, which has made financing real estate homeownership, which is typically the way people go, almost impossible for a lot of people. So that's made us more a renter's nation. But why would I, back in 1980 to 1993 was when I bought my first home and took title, why would I have that long stretch, 13 years from buying rental property, investment property? I, was it, I couldn't find one. I couldn't qualify for one. You were wondering, what's the problem? No, none of the above. I realized early on because I studied assets, I studied investing, I studied stock market, mutual funds, I studied real estate, tangible assets. The tangible assets won over hands down. Um, I'm just a big, big fan of tangible hard assets like owning a business or businesses, or in my case today, real estate, because I sold my, my business, my practice some 20 plus years ago. I love tangible assets. I'm not to say you shouldn't have money in financial products and stock markets, uh, mutual funds, whatever you want to do. Some diversification, of course, I think is, is valid, uh, but I like to understand what I'm doing. I like to understand. That's why I like the control feature of tangible assets. I can actually evaluate and have control. Now today, I'm much more passive than I was back in the 80s and, and 90s where I had my hands on uh, virtually everything I was doing in real estate. I was I was an operator. I was also a dentist, but I was also an operator in real estate. Not the easiest thing to do, by the way. I'm not saying uh, if you're young, you should go out and necessarily do that. Uh, it's not easy. I didn't have a child until I was, well, about that same age, 36. So I had some runway to do this. But that being said, why did I not own a home? I realized by my studies early on that a home where it, it, it's, it's valid to have one, and you could say it is in some regards an asset, but it's really more of a liability. Today, it's cheaper in most domiciles to rent. Yeah, it's cheaper, it's cheaper. You know, not, notwithstanding the high price of houses today and the high cost of mortgage, but there's higher property taxes, there's higher insurance. And home ownership, if you've owned one, or you know somebody who's owned one, if you haven't owned one yet, maybe you're younger listening to this, which is great. There's also the additional costs of home ownership. Like you've got to fix stuff. You've got to maintain it. I don't mean just little minor repairs and maintenance. I'm talking about roofs eventually give out. Uh, heating and mechanical systems eventually give out. Uh, you, you, older homes can have sewer line and plumbing problems, electrical problems. Uh, all kinds of things have to be fixed and maintained. And, and it's not cheap. Even with new construction homes, uh, you have the cost of just having to fill the home, right? Uh, when you buy something new, a new home, it's usually going to be bigger than the last home you lived in. Or if you rented a house, you, you finally move into your house. Well, you want to fix it all up to make it like your home, right? You can do things to your home that you can't do to a rental property. So these added costs, which, again, most people say, well, that's just part of home ownership. And it is. Man, that's the problem. And that's why I'm saying that's why I held off and I had to... I had to, had to hold my wife off uh, for some for all those years because we were married for 10 of those 13 years until 1993 when we actually took title of a home. I had to hold her off all that time and say, hey, just wait, be patient. Uh, I'm doing this for a purpose. Now, you can only do, so, uh, do that so long. Now, it's not like we lived in bad houses. No, we lived in nice houses. In fact, in fact, when I was before we had a child and we were still um, working on our career path and 
uh, adding to our education, uh, you know, we, we actually rented an apartment for, for a few years. Uh, but then I used my skill sets, and this is important, skill sets, what I was learning in the financial market, not, not Wall Street, I'm talking financial market in real estate. And I negotiated in when I was probably about uh, 28 years old, thereabouts, negotiate a lease option on a really nice home, a two-year-old home that was like just a you know few feet off the water in a really nice location. Had I had to try to buy that house, I would have had to put a large sum of money down. I think the house was about this was back in 1987, uh, $265,000 house. It's a pretty decent house uh, back almost 40 years ago. 20% down, well, that would have been what? A little over $50,000. $50,000 that I couldn't put in other investments. See, I'm about getting my money working at an early age. So not having my money trapped in a house, in house home equity was very important to me. My financing costs back then, the interest rates were around eight, eight and a half percent. Uh, so, you know, on the rest of that mortgage would have been over $200,000 added up. That would have been fairly significant. My lease payments, which were all inclusive. I didn't have to pay property taxes or insurance when you lease. I didn't have to fix anything. Uh, I didn't have to maintain it. Uh, were about two and a half percent of the total value of that house. Two and a half percent when interest when interest rates mortgage interest rates were about eight and a half. So that's what I call financial arbitrage. Now again, it took a skill set to do that. I learned how to do that. I learned how to negotiate. I learned what to look for when finding that kind of home, and that served as our home for about the next seven years. Great place. Great location and very, very inexpensive. So I was okay with that. Uh, I was fine with that home. It worked well while I was still building my real estate, you know, mini empire. Then when we had our first child in 1993, it was time to move because we lived in an area that um, was going to be a little too busy and needed to move. So that was the first time I took title to our own home. I actually still live in that home today. Um, it's a nice home. Uh, it's in a great neighborhood. Uh, it's been paid off for a long time. I don't need to move. I don't need anything more. But in the meantime, I was able to focus on building my wealth, which started out with, with nothing back back in, in 1980 when I, when I was just starting dental school. I started out with nothing. I had debt. And through the compound effect of making these small but important decisions early in life, that's what I'm trying to get across to you wherever you are in life today. It's the, it's the small, intentional decisions you make. The problem with getting into a career path where you start making more money which is the goal. It's always the goal to make more money. And you should, you should, you should bring more value to the marketplace or whatever you do. But the problem with that is we typically elevate our lifestyle as we get that rise in income. It's just a natural, it's, it's kind of, it, it's the American dream. It's what you're supposed to do. Buy the bigger house, get the better cars. I never did that. I always kept my lifestyle burn rate. So I call it a down low. Even today when yes, I could afford, you know, to move to a, bigger McMansion if I wanted that. I can have, you know, a bunch of cars and I, it just, that stuff doesn't move me. You know what moves me? Freedom. Freedom. Freedom to do what I want and serve how I want to today, live the way I want to. I, I, my schedule's flexible. I, I, I just, I'm, I can't implore upon you more than to don't let your lifestyle get out, out of hand, even though you can afford it even though you're credit worthy and you can expand and you can, you can pay those bills, you get on a treadmill really, really quickly. When I talk to younger people, that's the thing I, I give them is like, don't let your lifestyle rise to the level of your income. You do that and you're in a trap. You're in a trap. That's the way you get ahead in life. No matter what the marketplace is, no matter, no matter what the economy is doing, whether it's a recession or a bull market or whatever we have, if you just keep that margin, that margin, meaning you're not press, pressing your lifestyle to move ahead and you're instead investing in assets, those assets, whatever they are, I love real estate, but whatever yours are, study those assets, understand what they're about. And that's what's going to give you the freedom way sooner than that mystical retirement age that people talk about. I don't know. Is that supposed to be in your 60s or something? I don't know. That's what I heard. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about you focusing on your freedom and how to get there. And that's one of the key aspects that I did early in my life that paid off in spades, in spades. Don't forget to follow the path of others who have been there.